Hey there, Dango Stu here. Today's video is about putting the gearbox for our Johnson 30 back together and is proudly sponsored by MarineEngine.com. Before we get going with that though, I've got another viewer t-shirt photo. This one here is David Newland from Belgium. I hope I got your surname right, David, but thanks for sending the photo in. Unlucky to lose to France, but looking forward to the England game this weekend. All right, one more spot, and then we've done the full loop. I also often forget to mention that the link to buy t-shirts is in the description of each video if you want one. This video has been a long time coming because I've been struggling to find the information and the tools I need, more than the parts. MarineEngine.com were able to supply the parts easy enough, but the tools were a totally different story. A big thanks to Craig from Hewitt's Marine down the road who lent me some of the tools I'm going to need. Unfortunately, they didn't have the spaces I need to set the bearings for the pinion to the correct depth. And it turns out they're actually discontinued from Ebonary, so you can't get them at all anyway. The information on the depth isn't available as far as I can see. It's certainly not in the service manual. It just says use this part number spacer to get the depth. You can't get it, and it doesn't tell you the depth. So we're going to have to figure something else out. Fortunately, though I do stock a universal tool, it'll definitely help solve this problem out. With the power of beer, we will be victorious, I hope. My plan is to start by putting the forward prop shaft bearing in, then we can put the forward gear in, and then we can put the pinion gear in, and I'm gonna measure from the top how far it is from the top of the gearbox to the top of the pinion here. Then you can see here, there's these witness marks on the pinion of where the bearings have been rolling previously. And with a bit of maths, we should be able to figure out the distance we need. It may not be millimeter perfect, but I don't see what else we can do. Undoubtedly, we could take the part number, put on the net, ask someone who's got one to measure it, make one pretty easily out of a piece of pipe, but I just don't have time. All right, let's start with the race for the prop shaft bearing. Here's the new forward prop shaft bearing. So I'm just gonna quickly double check it's right. Just comparing the two races or the cups they seem fine. What I'm going to use to do that is one of these kits for driving races in. Fortunately these are one of these really generic tools, you don't need one of these custom outboard tools. Looks like the 40mm one is going to fit this race. I think the next one's 44 which is too big. The service manual says to oil this first so I will oil it. It sits in a bath. Things like wheel bearings you tend not to because they're just packed with grease but in this case it sits immersed in oil anyway and it's only going to make it easier to get in. This has also been in the freezer for a little while just to shrink it down to make it a bit easier to install. Alright, there it is down there just resting where it needs to go. I've got the gearbox sitting here on a block of wood so as I hammer it down it won't sort of damage it too much. The handle on this tool's not long enough to reach out of the gearbox. I'm actually just going to give it a few taps with the handle of the hammer just see if I can get it started so it stays in position first. All right, that got it started so it's not falling out. Now I'm just gonna find an extension rod that I can put on the end of the tool and just drive it all the way home. I realized towards the end actually, because this drive shaft's slightly tapered, you can sit it on a tool and it sits quite nicely, so it worked all right in the end. Now we've got our bearing race down in there and it's seated flush and it's all the way in. You can hear it sort of change tone slightly when it's all the way down and the edge is even all the way around as well. So a tool like this is pretty important because it's very hard to get onto that with anything else and if you damage the inside surface, this is the old race here, if you're sort of trying to tap the edge and you scrape down it by mistake, then you've really got to replace it because that little nick will wear the bearing very fast. I think this whole set cost about $40, so not that expensive. All right, now interestingly, it says in the service manual now, we're doing a bit of a step first, we can take these measurements, but the order it says to install the components is that we put the pinion gear in first, then we put the forward gear in afterwards. So we need our bearing in into that race. So this is our bearing here, tapered roller bearing. So we're going to put that into the race, then I'm going to put the pinion gear in and then we're going to try and slot the forward gear, see how that goes. Then when they're all seated, we'll take our measurements. 
So I think I'll drop the bearing in first. Just leave that in. We're going to oil that properly before we install it for the final time. Then we'll just slot our pinion gear assembly in. This is our forward gear, so I'm just going to put it in. Mm, went in nice and easily. This is the reverse gear, but all I did with the forward gear was drop it down past the pinion gear, come round, and then it dropped into the bearing. So that's what it looks like now. Pinion gear sitting in there and resting against the forward gear. What I want to do now is measure from the top of the pinion gear to the top of the housing here. When we use our installing tool, which I think you could make too, so I'll tell you some measurements where I can, is we have a little plate like this. They call it a plate, but it's like a little disc. And it rests this way on top of here, on top of this housing. So what I'm going to do is measure from the top of the pinion gear to the top of the housing here. So I'm just going to reach in with my finger and make sure the pinion gear is seated up against the top of the gearbox and then we'll see how far it is. I'm going to call that 126 millimeters. All right, we'll take that pinion gear out now and we'll figure out how far down we need to push each of the bearings. So what I now know is we need 126 millimeters from here back. So we need the top of this one here, this bearing here to be 126 millimeters plus the distance of that dark section. And the bottom bearing here, we need to be 126 millimeters plus the distance from here to the start of the light section here. That's what I'm gonna go with. So it's six millimeters along here. So I'm gonna say 132 millimeters from the top of the gearbox housing to the top of the top bearing. And then here, looks like it's 36 millimeters. So I'm going to call it 162 millimeters from the top of the gearbox to the top of the bottom bearing. All right, I'll grab the bearings out of the freezer now and I'll show you how this tool works. So this is the bearings I'm using. We got four of these all up. So these are the two for the pinion. Because I want oil in the rollers and a bit of oil is going to make them go in more easily, I'm also going to just roll these in oil a little bit first. All right, so while they're sitting there, the way this tool works is you find a cup that fits. If we find an old bearing, here's an old one. This is the cup that fits here so it drives the bearing in without damaging it. This cup's ever so slightly smaller than the outside so it doesn't catch on the inner tube at all. Then the idea is you put a plate on here, you put a spacer on here, then we Put a screw on the end here then you hammer it down and this distance here is the exact distance you need so what we need to do is make up a spacer here that gives us the two totals we need which is 132 millimeters and 162 millimeters just doing a little sanity check of the measurements so there is exactly 30 mils between the tops of the two bearings so it's just a double little double check to make sure our measurements make sense and they do so i've got the bearing here so if i put an old bearing on the top of the bearing is obviously level with the underside of this tool, the lip here. And even if I sort of roughly pop it on like this, we can see that this spacer is about 10 millimeters too short because we're here at 172 millimeters and we need to be down here at 162. So what I think I'll do is just get some washers and pack this out till we get the right depth. So that's 11.8. 9.4. Alright, let's see what the total is anyway. So if I put a right angle across the face of the tool, and then we measure down here, we're pretty much dead on 162 millimeters now. So this is what I'm going to go with. So once again, it says make no dry assemblies, lubricate everything with gearbox oil, which is what we're doing. All right, it recommends using a press. I think if you don't have access to a press, you could probably just hammer them in, but we'll use a press. Before we head over there, I'll just show you one last thing. And this is from our newly oiled bearings, is they have two sides. One side 
has the lettering on it, the other side doesn't, and the side that doesn't is slightly tapered. So this is the side we're going to push down. We're pushing down on the curved side so it goes in, and we're pressing onto the side that has the part number writing on it. So the side with the writing here is the side we're pressing against the tool. All right, pop the gearbox in the press so that the ram's above where we need it to be. Then I'm going to put the bearing onto the tool, writing side towards the tool, and then we'll drop it down in. What you can see now is this distance until this washer here touches these washers, that's the exact distance we now need to press this bearing in. All right, I've reached the limit of the travel of this ram before we've got it all the way, so that's okay. I'll just lift it up. All right. So as soon as this top washer touches our spacer here, we know we're at the right depth. Now we need to get the distance down to 132 millimeters. Because we're shrinking this distance, we need a larger spacer here. This bit of pipe fits over, so I'm actually just going to measure the right distance, maybe a tiny bit less so we can put a washer in just to get it right. Alright, putting the calipers across this now, it's saying not over 94, 94 and a half millimetres, so I might grind a smidge off. What I will do, a little sanity check, I'll just measure this distance again to make sure we're close to the 132 we were hoping for. Yep, pretty much bang on 132, so this should be good. All right, writing side against the tool, and we'll go press this in. So those three, the two pinion bearings and the forward prop shaft bearing race, I think are by far the three hardest parts, so they're done. I can't vouch for these measurements, they're my best guess, they haven't been proven to be correct yet. If somebody has the actual tool, the actual spacer, I'll be interested to hear what their lengths are. If they're way out from this, I'll just have to redo it. But hopefully you get the idea of how they should be installed. And if you can, I'd get access to the right tool because pretty hard without it. Okay, I've just popped the pinion gear back in too, so I'll show you what it looks like now. So hopefully you can see there, we've now got the bearings in and you can just see the top of the pinion shaft poking up through the bearings. So it looks well supported. Even if they're not millimetre perfect, I reckon they'd be good enough to do the job. We can also see here that only about this much of the pinion gear is supposed to pop up from that top bearing. So by eyeball, it actually looks like it's running in a pretty good position. Okay, next thing we're gonna install is the drive shaft bearing, which goes in a housing above the two pinion gear bearings. This is the drive shaft bearing we'll be installing. This is the bearing housing, so we need to put the bearing into the housing first, then the housing into the gearbox. Once again, I'm just gonna oil this first. I'm going to use this little attachment, which came in the Evinrude kit, but essentially it's this shape. If you wanna make a tool like this, all you really need to do is find a bit of solid round bar that's slightly smaller than the outside diameter of the bearing, and then machine the end down so that it's slightly smaller than the inside diameter. So not hard to make if you can go to a machinist, they'll be able to make one up for you. All right, once again, writing side towards the tool so that the slightly cup side can come in. Although it did the job, I'm thinking this may not be the right tool for this job in that what I believe the tool should be like is small enough to go through the bearing, but large enough to actually press against this housing. This means that the bearing will stop when it's flush, and it also means that the same tool can be used to push the housing itself in. What I'm gonna do in this case is I've got a larger one, which is slightly smaller than the housing, so I'm gonna use that to push the housing in. In this case also, the housing pushes in until it hits a lip, so you don't have to measure the depth in any way, so this should be more straightforward. All right, housing and bearing in with the writing side of the bearing pointing up. And I'll 
just put a little extension on this. All right, can feel there the gearbox is starting to lift as it's come to a stop, so we know it's all the way in. All right, now you can see the housing and the drive shaft bearing there, and the two oil seals go on top of that. All right, the last two bearings we have now are the two prop shaft bearings that go into the bearing carrier. So we need to press the two in, one each end. Pretty straightforward. These two bearings are the same part number and obviously diameter then as the pinion gear bearings. All right, we've got the tool, got the two oiled bearings, got the housing, we'll head over to the press and get these last two done. Okay, so that's in with the room still for the oil seals, and then the inner one goes in here. What we have now is the aft bearing here with space for those oil seals, and the forward one here. So these are the two that the prop shaft runs on, then finally goes into that taper roller bearing right at the front of the gearbox. So ultimately the prop shaft runs on three bearings. Okay, I think we're gonna wrap up here because A, I've run out of time, and B, I think it makes sense to have these videos divided if you're searching for them down the track. So next time, we'll put everything back together. So we'll put all that shift linkage and all that kind of stuff, which I know a lot of people will have problems with. It's a bit tricky. Then we'll put all the seals in, and then we'll put the new water pump on. So until then, take care. I'll catch you soon. Bye. <music>